Hello welcome to episode 138 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, A Thousand and One Movies You Must See Before You Die. I wanted to do a more recent film, because we've been doing so much in the 20s, 30s, 40s, so I went to 2011, The Kid With A Bike. Now I watched this two years ago for this series, but that was during a time when I was watching films from the book, but I couldn't be bothered to make the reviews for them. Uh, so I wanted to rewatch it, and I wanted to show it to Connie because I knew it was great. She was not really having any of it last night because I, I just couldn't sell it, you know? I mean, the title doesn't sound very interesting. The Kid with a Bike. I was trying to tell her about the story. She's like, nothing about that makes me interested in the film. And I kind of see where she was coming from, but luckily uh, I, I kind of almost tripped her into watching it. It's uh, funny how that wouldn't like intrigue me, but you say, oh, it's four guys in a diner. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's do it, you know? True, true, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, um, we watched it last night, um, so it's still pretty fresh. And we will definitely be doing a spoiler talk for this one, because I want to talk about the ending, and I know that Connie has an opinion on the ending. But outside of that, um, it's a Belgian film, um, although it's uh, the dialogue is in French. And uh, it's about this young boy. Uh, young kid, uh, he's living in a home. Um, his dad is around, but has left him at this home. Uh, and this kid, Cyril, is, you know, he's really hedging all his bets on his dad coming back for him. And um, when it becomes clear to him that his dad might not be coming back to him, uh, he decides to run away from this home to try and find his dad. And also, uh, with that, his bike, uh, which is very special to him, uh, probably because his dad bought it for him. Uh, so he goes on this, this little odyssey for his bike and um, comes across this woman who, uh, who ends up finding his bike for him. Um, she kind of sees the trouble that he's in and kind of, I guess, kind of takes a, a bit of sympathy towards him. And she goes out and finds the bike, buys it off a kid who had it, and gives it back to him. Uh, and then he kind of maybe takes a shine to this woman and asks her if he can stay with her at the weekends. Not to become so much a foster mother instantly, but to kind of maybe like skate along the, the waters of being a foster parent. So she agrees, and he goes and stays with this woman and um, tries to get her to help him to find his dad. That's all you need to know about the, the plot. Um, it really it, sounds boring when you when you tell a story. Right. And I, if but, you told me all of that yesterday, I'd be like... Well, that's yeah, like, yeah I, I, well, I, was, I, I wasn't going to go into the details about that, but I'll, mm. we'll get into it. That's, that's just summing up where it starts. Um, it, it's a film about this kid who has been through a lot of stuff, and you can clearly tell he's been through a lot of stuff. And what I love about the film directed by the Dardenne brothers, and I, and I love their films, is that the film doesn't set up anything. It drops you right into the story. Mm -hmm. Bang. There are no scenes that set up what's happening next. It just cut to the next moment, and you don't need any explanation whatsoever. There's no expositional dialogue of like, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. It just, it's like these, these snapshots of scenes that are obviously very important to Cyril throughout this period in his life. And uh, I just think it's really effective. I mean, it's like an hour and a half. And I feel like if this was an American film, same story, same outcome, everything, I feel like it would be two hours long. And it would have half an hour of unnecessary scenes that you might not even notice at first. But seeing the film as it is here, it's really compact and it really just, just really flows well. Because every scene is, is an important moment, I think, to the story. Yeah. Um, and it's a very naturalistic film. It's almost like a documentary. Do you want to jump uh, in on that? Yeah, because uh, when you say what the story is, it, it doesn't really... Sure. It doesn't make me want to see it. Yeah. But when I was watching it, 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 it I just felt like a fly in his life. Yes, yes. Kind of. Because he was very, very good. Oh, in incredible. I thought he was brilliant. Just a kid. Thomas Durrett was his name, the young actor. His voice hadn't even, like... Evolved. <laughs> what do you what Broken. Do you say? Yeah. Or anything. He's just still a kid. Uh, I, I thought the woman was great. Yes. She, she was really good. The woman who takes him in. Uh, yeah. the great actress and uh, she really um, got across the warmth that her character needed to yeah. show in the film. When she was introduced, I was like, huh, it's interesting. Right. You know, when, when she was introduced, like, I felt like, uh, are we going to see more of her in a way? Mm. But she was just like, you, you didn't see her until she was... I in the shop. I, I love that scene that he's basically running away from the people who work at the foster home, they're trying to get him back, and he runs through this doctor's office and he just grabs hold of this woman and pulls her off the chair, it's a really shocking moment. Yeah. And the film is full of those kind of charged kind of moments, like holy shit. And he grabs hold of her and she kind of almost doesn't even react. And she's like, you can hold on to me if you want, just don't do don't, it so tight. Yeah. And it was a really like, you know, 
most normal people would react strongly to this, like, get the fuck off me or whatever, you know. Yeah. But you could instantly tell that this woman had a lot of compassion. And then that yeah. plays into the rest of the film. Um, and the the bike is very... Uh, I don't know if it's key to the film, but it kind of is. It, is. it is and it isn't. It reminded me of being a kid and how special my bike was to me. Because as a kid of that age, as a teenager or a young pre-teenager, your bike is like your your gateway to freedom. I mean, it's not really freedom, but you can you can ride around the neighborhood. You can do what you want. It's such a a tool that makes you feel like I don't know. I just love biking around the neighborhood as a kid, mm. and I so it's more more of a boy thing, maybe. Sure, but I like I had a bike too, but I wasn't like sure. I would care if if it got stolen, but I mm. wasn't like oh, I'm gonna bike around the neighborhood now. You got to be careful. In, like you got to be careful in 2017. You can't say anything as a boy thing. Because that would be sexist. <laughs> Did I not say was a boy thing? Oh, there you go. Yeah, nicely covered. Nicely covered. Actually, I don't. I can't remember if I said that. But back in the day, it was more like <laughs> back that. Back in the day, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, makes us sound old when I said that. But, true. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, but I, I know I, what you mean, though. It, sure. You always have something that you really treasure. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, it was the Barbie dolls. Yeah. Cause I'm a girl. I'm kidding. <laughs> I just want to. But like. Piss people off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get off that track, but like you could understand why the bike meant so much to him, uh, but also because his dad got it for him, and his relationship with his dad is integral. And what I love about the film is how screwed up Cyril is, and how frustrated you get with him because he is so unresponsive to all the people around him. He doesn't, he doesn't react to their help well. He's pretty damaged. He's Six. pretty damaged, yeah, yeah, and he does these horrible things. And I've seen kids who do stuff like this um, growing up. And even as an adult, I've seen them. You know, I used to work in a supermarket. I'd see these kids come in stealing and stuff, and I, I want to smack them in the face. Not really, but you know, you just get so frustrated with them. I think and then I said that once yeah. during the movie, I was like, oh, I just want to smack him. But but then because I got so angry. The thing that that means that is special to well, not special to me, but like I, I really feel strongly about this. I should say, is trying to understand how people get like this. And what I think this film does is it makes you understand why he is the way he is without throwing it in your face. You know, you just slowly realize why he's as messed up as he is. Mm. And I loved the progression of his character. It was it, it it was smooth. It didn't feel rushed. It wouldn't be spoiling things to say that you know he starts to change throughout the film as he spends time with this woman. But uh, right, so I mean, that, I think that's all we can really talk about without going into spoilers mm. in terms of the ending. Although I, I feel like the ending is going to kind of affect your opinion on the film anyway. The drama is great. It doesn't feel overplayed. Um, you know, it, it felt realistic. There's this incredible scene. It's very natural. And I and I have to give credit to the actor Thomas Durrett because there are quite a few physical scenes. You know, him getting in fights with kids, um, getting in fights with adults, and he's getting thrown around and stuff, and he's throwing himself around. And um, it, 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 it was realistic, like fighting in a movie as well. It, it didn't look like a movie fight. It looked like a real realistic scrap. And he must have taken a few bumps and bruises along the way filming this. And uh, and one scene in particular, he's been through a pretty rough thing that's happened, and he sat in the car, and it's just this charged oh, silence. Oh, that, that really... You just know something's going to happen. Like, he, he's not just going to sit there and not say anything or do anything, and suddenly he turns around, and the woman starts reacting, and he's clawing at his face, and it just... And oh. he starts banging his head up against the door. Mm. I actually go... <gasps> Like, I did that probably Seriously. at least three times it, during the movie. It, there's some scenes that hit you like a gut punch, and you know, and then he's got that little scratch scar down his face for, you know, the for, rest of the movie. for pretty much the rest of the movie. And it looks like a finger claw as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, for me, I loved this film when, when, when I first saw it. I just thought it was incredible. I, I just, I, again, it's very simple, very naturalistic. Um, and there are scenes that just play out. There's a scene where, where they go out for a picnic, and they just sat there. And it'll just play out for like 20 seconds with no dialogue, you know, and, and you're just looking at their faces and seeing how they're acting, and that tells the story. It just It's a very simple film, but I feel like it probably, surely must have taken a lot of effort to make it come across that, that way. So, yeah, for me, I love it. I think it's brilliant, and uh, it is definitely a film you should see before you die. Um, what about you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Say so what you want, it, you know, it doesn't bother me. I, I don't know. I'm glad I saw it. I'm glad you forced me into it. Sure, yeah. Because he basically did. I said I didn't want to watch it. He he got it on the TV anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> let's not get into that. Let's, let's get to your, yeah. your your thoughts. Is it, you know, yes or I no? I don't know. 
I don't know. You don't know? No. Okay. It's not a movie that I would go to my class and go like, you guys go see sure. this. Sure. Alright, okay. I would show it to my mom, but yeah. like, I, I, it's so special that I don't think like 80% of the population I know about would like it. I feel like if anyone sat down and watches from start to finish, they 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 get something from it. I do, um, but I think the ending does play a lot into yeah, into it. But we'll we'll talk about that. In the... So many people are not open minded enough to see the natural. No, I agree. Of it. I I agree. And all they will see is a kid and his bike. My, no, my point is, if someone sat down and actually watched it, you know, I mean, get getting the horse to the water is one yes. thing, but you know. Anyway, so we'll leave it at that. You have to be very thirsty. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, def definitely yes from me, you're mm. still on the fence. So let's get into some spoiler talk. So hopefully you've seen the film, or you don't care. Um, and yeah, so th he gets kind of coaxed in by this uh, this drug dealer who wants him to do this job, and he gets into this robbery and things, and it goes to that whole plot, and we're not going to go into that because it'll take too long and just mm. waste time. But the ending uh, involves him running away from um, the young boy who he hit with a baseball bat and he gets chased, he climbs up the tree and the, the young boy throws a, a rock at his head, hits young him in the head. boy was like a young man. Really. Well, yeah, he was probably uh, in his late teens. Rock hits Cyril in the head, he falls off this tree, maybe a 10, 15 foot drop. Mm -hmm. And Another looked... part where I went... <gasps> when I first watched the film, I, I, I couldn't, I mean, I, I guess I know how you felt. I couldn't believe it and I thought he was dead. I thought that was it. Yeah. And I thought maybe he's okay. But then the, the boy walks around and he sees him and he's motionless. He calls his dad over and they're talking about what to do. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll say it was an accident and call the ambulance to, to get the body and stuff. And it's like, I'm Remove just like, the evidence that you threw the rock. If he's dead, then we say this and that. You yeah, know? and it just like, I, I, it just made my blood run cold. And then after about a couple of minutes, Cyril gets up and they're just in shock. And he gets up and kind of dusts himself off a bit and then he leaves. And he doesn't do anything. He just gets on his bike now, and goes back. Now, it's a, it's a very unrealistic ending in the terms of... Uh, How realistic the rest of it was. Yes. Sure, yeah. Um, because a fall like that would definitely hurt you. Um, it wouldn't definitely kill you. Um, and kids are tough. And Cyril is definitely a kid who's made out to be tough. Um, but you would think that he probably had a concussion. Maybe he had broken something. Well, um, he did faint. So however, he definitely has a con had a concussion. However, I, so I very specifically have seen someone fall out of a tree at great height and they walked off when I was a kid and, and seemingly were fine. Not that high. Definitely that high, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm being completely serious. And it, it's within the realms of possibility, but I understand how it can seem far-fetched. Now, the, even if, you know, it, regardless, what it shows throughout the whole film is that whenever Cyril gets into this kind of uh, confrontations with people, his first it, it's that fight-or-flight thing, right? And he always goes to fight. In fact, he even bites people. You know, he's a nasty little shit when he gets into a fight. And this is a situation where he would get into a fight. Someone had just hit him in the head with a rock and he's fallen off a tree. So surely the, the Cyril at the beginning of the movie would have woken up and just lunged at both of them. But he doesn't. He accepts it and he walks off. Gets on his bike and he rides off and he moves on from it. And that to me is him moving on with his life and kind of turning his back on the violence that had kind of ruled his life before that and it makes you wonder if his dad maybe beat him up or something or if there was something to do with that because how, why would he be so violent and then the whole thing where he meets his dad and his dad is so not interested is heartbreaking you know um, so I, I understand why you didn't like the ending but for me it works because it really is it's just a, it's the symbolism and apparently the directors wanted to the, their inspiration for this was like a fairy tale almost and they saw the woman as kind of the fairy uh, who would kind of save him in a way uh, which is interesting to take a really naturalistic film and put that kind of a uh, thought process behind it. But, um, go on, yeah, I've talked enough about it. I disagree. I don't think he would have launched at them because right before that he was fleeing because he knew he couldn't get the kid. And sure. now his dad was there as well. And so obviously he would, he would try to get away from the situation. Oh yeah, sure. Well, well, well at that point he'd already changed. Because at that point, it's uh, it's uh, it's after everything has happened in the film, and you see him and the woman, and they're happy, and they're gonna have a barbecue and stuff, and he's smiling and, and like laughing and stuff. Something I really noticed was when he um, he buys the the charcoal right at the end. You know, he's looking at the person who's selling him. And he's like, oh, thank you. You know, he's more attentive. He's more you know. It, it, you you see the change in him. So obviously, he runs away from that boy. But I don't know. Just the the way that something extreme happens to him again, 
and he decides to kind of rise above it and just leave the situation. So, or he had a concussion and he didn't know exactly what was going on, and uh, you know. Well, that's one way to look at it. You could certainly look at it as open ended. I know some people even said they think that it's uh, it's one, it's a not a dream sequence, but it, oh yeah, clearly the boy died, and this it's, is just like a you know. It's almost like I thought it would have been a better ending if he actually did die, to be honest. Because well, I, I just been. I just found that like so unlikely. He was way too high up, the ground was hard. It, it was just like cut like that to me. Everything else was no. very thorough, but that part, which was such a huge part, and you sat there and you're like, Oh my god. Well, I mean I, I and then no, I'm I'm just gonna walk off. I, I, I would I, I would argue that the robbery scene is pretty far fetched too. That he ma managed to take them both out with that baseball bat, like of course, you know. So I, I, it has those moments, which you know. But yeah, the, the ending still works for me. But I can see why it doesn't doesn't work for you. So um, would you give it a verdict now? Do, can you come up with a a yes or no? A yes for movie lovers and no for everyone else. <laughs> Who's everyone else? I mean, just there. Like, I know you. Right. You're you're the person I know who loves movies. Right. Everybody else is like, eh, I'll watch the new Avengers movie. Right. Okay. Deadpool was awesome. Those kind of people. <laughs> they wouldn't like this movie. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's just the way it is. All right. I'm not saying that people who love Deadpool wouldn't like this movie. Okay. But. But you're glad you that, watched it. That. Those people. <laughs> but you're glad you watched it. Yes, yeah. I'm. I love movies, okay. so I I saw okay. the beauty of it. Right. I just didn't like the ending because everything else was really great. Yeah, and then I just felt like I can definitely see the I, I can definitely see the frustration in it because um it it is a it is a leap at the end, but um I feel like they ran out of time and they were like no uh, you know uh, I like how just just simple it ends. He just rides around a corner on his bike and just goes on. Like I don't know, there's something about it. It's uh. I, I kind he of would at least have inner bleedings, you know, or broken. Well, bones. probably, yeah. I mean, maybe he got back. He got to the barbecue, and he's like, "Here you go, here's your burgers," and he just collapses. <laughs> well, that would have been better. <laughs> Make the movie last five uh, more minutes, and then she has to pay the hospital bill, and she's like, "Oh, this kid's too expensive, you know, send him back." Do you know, one, one of my favorite parts. She just paid like. In fact, my favorite part, I think, is that uh, the woman has this this boyfriend, and uh, at one point he says to her. You know, me. it's him or me, and I even think that's far fetched. I think that that kind of jumps in that he get, goes from like zero to sixty a bit too quick. But well, she did introduce him as her friend in the beginning, so it didn't seem that serious from the true, beginning. True, yeah, but um, I just thought that's quite a powerful moment. You know, that she's just like him. You know, uh, yeah, I, I just love the relationship between Cyril and the woman. I forget the woman's name now, but uh, yeah. So we waffled on for far too long about this. I thought it would be a, a ten minute review. What? Me that I can't remember her name. Yeah, I can't remember her name either. But uh, yeah, it's a fantastic film. Definitely check it out. And uh, I don't know if their other recent film is in the book, Two Days, One Night, but that's very similar to this. But it's uh, a more adult story. But uh, I don't know if all of the films are like this. If they are, I definitely need to check out more. But um, there you go. Kid with a bike. Thanks for watching.